This episode of Test Drive is brought to you by Elmec and their EV Duty Smart Home Charger. I want to talk about the sustainability and future of electric cars. Now we could spend hours, days, weeks, and multiple videos talking about everything related to the entire process of building and owning an electric car. Things like where the actual electricity comes from to charge these up, how the batteries are mined, these precious metals out of the ground can cause devastating ecological impacts to the areas that the precious metals are being mined out of. So we could spend a lot of time talking about that but we're gonna focus on one specific thing. I wanna just talk about these cars and cars in general long term. Now this is a pretty straightforward video. I'm not gonna be doing any editing. We don't have any B-roll or anything like that. It's more of an open discussion. So at any point, if you feel like you wanna jump in with your own opinion, leave a comment below. And you can also reply to somebody else's comments as well. I wanna get into this as I always do. I always try my best to reply to all the comments possible, but I do wanna have a discussion about this to see what you think about this. And we can all kind of collaborate together to come up with some ideas. But the point of this video is to talk about what we're going to be doing long term with cars. I mean, something even like this 2020 Chevrolet Bolt, chances are in about seven to eight years, the battery won't be as efficient as it is today. That's just how technology works. Even the phone that I'm using after three, four years now, it's getting to the point where I can't go a full day because I've charged it up all the time, every single day over the course of three years that the battery degrades. And same thing with these electric cars. These are much bigger batteries. They take a lot more charging capability to be able to get fully charged. And over time, that will diminish. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is twofold. Number one, I have an electric car this week, so it makes sense. But also this past week, Diane Buckner for the CBC wrote an article about a man in British Columbia who has a used 2013 Nissan Leaf. And he's had a lot of trouble over the past couple months trying to get a replacement battery. Now, when he bought the car a few years ago, he knew very well that it was used and had mileage on it and that over time, the battery would degrade. But at the time he bought it, he claims that the dealership said he could replace the battery for about $5,000. Seems pretty reasonable. But fast forward to today and he's had quite a bit of problems. He's gone to the dealership and they say they just can't order it and to talk to Nissan Canada. And then Nissan Canada has said, go to your dealer and get them to deal with it. They don't seem to want to touch it. Now, if you look online, there's a lot of people that talk about the first generation Leaf as more of a disposable electric car because there wasn't any true thermal management for that first generation leaf, the batteries essentially will just keep on dying. There is no way to preserve it unless you really just fundamentally changed how the car worked. So there's a lot of people who think that just don't even bother with that generation car. And if you buy it for a good price, use it as long as you can, and eventually it will just end up in the landfill. But that got me thinking, I mean, so many cars are gonna go into the landfill just because the batteries don't make sense to replace. What can we do to solve that problem? Well, there's a couple things. First of all, we can figure out a way to replace those batteries. There are third party people who will take a older Nissan Leaf and recondition the battery, take out the cells that have gone bad, replace them with new ones. There's even ways to take bigger cells, you know, because cell technology gets better every year. You know, they get smaller and they get more dense. So you can have more power. You have more kilowatt hours in a battery than you did previously over time. So something like a 2013 that only got about 120 kilometers might be able to fit, say, a battery that could do 200 kilometers in the same space. So there are people out there who will take that, take the car, redo the batteries, put in a new set, and trick the computer system into thinking that you know, everything's good with it, and it will report the accurate range and accurate information about the battery. That's great. Costs some money, but at least you're not throwing away a car because it is very eco-friendly to buy something used. If it just goes in the landfill, it's a big waste. Now, obviously, cars don't go in the landfill, but you know what I mean. The idea is if you reuse, resell your vehicle and buy something used, you're not necessarily needing to have one completely manufactured from scratch. And I think that's one way that we can keep these cars on the road for longer. If more companies can take a car like this, it's an electric car from the beginning, so you know, you've got the specifications online for the battery pack, they should, in theory, be able to come up with an aftermarket solution. But that's great for a fully electric car that already exists today. What about all the cars that are on the market that are internal combustion engines? 
Well, take a look at Arnold Schwarzenegger. He is very famous for taking, I mean, first of all, he's very famous, period, but he's famous in the electric car world because he took a first generation Hummer H1 and made it electric. Now, he personally didn't do it, but he went to a company that could do it so he could drive that truck fully electric. It was one of the worst polluting vehicles, least efficient you could buy at the time, and now it's completely electric. That's, I think, where the future will go. Now, if you haven't watched HBO's Watchmen, I think you really should. First of all, it's a fantastic show, and I would say probably one of my favorite television shows I've watched, not only in recent time, but just period. Fantastic. If you watch, though, all the cars in that show are electric, and it's not Chevy Bolts and Nissan Leafs. It's run-of-the-mill cars in this alternate timeline world that just happen to be electric. Now, they don't really go into depth, and I haven't gone into the lore of this particular series, so for all we know, it could be that, you know, just because of the way the timeline diverged in the Watchmen world, electric cars became the norm, and people just ended up having a regular car that was electric because that was their standard, and not necessarily taking a car that existed and making it electric. But it did get me thinking, that's the future. We need to have a way to take the cars that exist right now and make them electric, at least have the option for it. Now here in Montreal, there is a company that does that. Uh, I'm not gonna necessarily say who they are because I did try to reach out to them several times to feature their vehicles on our show and it didn't really go anywhere, but I met the person who runs the company a couple years back at an electric car show. And what they do is they'll take an older generation Ford F-150, strip out everything that's internal combustion engine about it and put an electric system in there. Now the range isn't that great. I think it's about 100 or 150 kilometers on it, but still you're taking something that works, taking out the thing that pollutes the air and putting in a futuristic type of technology, in this case, an electric drive system. I think that's where the future will go. We need to be able to have an easier way to take existing cars that aren't electric and make them electric. Maybe not so much here in Quebec, a lot of the cars here rust out during the winter, so you're not going to want to spend a lot of money on a rust bucket, but there are plenty of markets out there that don't have rust issues that you can take a car, even if it's not in prime condition, but the body of it, the frame is in good shape, just get rid of the engine and put something electric. Now, I know that there's a huge headache to be doing that. You couldn't do it with every single car. It's not like you could just take one motor and one battery pack and make it work for everything, but I think that could be the future and if there's somebody out there who could really take that, if they have a background in engineering and electric, they know what they're doing, that could be a killer business to be able to make more or less of a plug and play kit. Maybe you guys work on a number of different vehicles that you can say, hey, we've got 15 cars, you know, here's the different models and makes and years that we can do, and we'll do it for you. And sure, it's gonna cost some money, but the more that happens, the more the price comes down. Because that's essentially the problem with the electric car market right now is the battery packs cost so much to manufacture that it isn't really cost effective to buy a two three thousand dollar car and put in a fifteen thousand dollar battery pack and then a ten thousand dollar battery system and swap everything over now you're looking at a thirty forty thousand dollar car which really isn't worth it. And that goes back to the issue of the man in British Columbia. He's got a car that he paid a couple thousand dollars for. He's gotten, you know, some decent use out of it over the past few years, but it's not worth the price to get it done. Even at $5,000, it's yeah, it's not bad. I'll tell you right now, it's not bad because I'll always remember there was an article, I believe it was Jalopnik, and I want to say it was like six years, seven years ago. They talked about buying one of the first generation Honda Insights way past its warranty date and replacing the battery. And I want to say it cost $13,000 US to replace the small battery pack on that car. But then more or less it was brand new again in terms of how efficient it would be. So a $5,000 price for a full on battery pack isn't bad at all. But the problem he's having is Nissan won't give it to him. The dealership can't give it to him because they can't order it. And then, you know, now he's getting quoted maybe up to $15,000 for something that he was told at the time was about 5,000. If you're in the States, you're a little bit luckier, or at least you were. Nissan did offer a battery pack replacement on the first generation Leafs. I believe it was about $5,000 at the time, but they ended that in 2018. So once again, you can't get the batteries. Here in Quebec, we're lucky. We have up to $13,000 in federal and provincial rebates to be able to buy an electric car like this Chevrolet Bolt. It's a great plus, you know, the car is about $45,000, $46,000. You take $13,000 off, now you're looking at a pretty affordable car 
with you know a winter range of about 300 kilometers, a summer range of over 400 kilometers. That's great for just driving around day to day and getting your usual chores done. But it is getting those cars down the road working again. Yeah, the CBC quoted that the average age of a vehicle here in Canada on the road is about 10 years. So a 2013 Nissan Leaf, it's within that normal average and that car is pretty much useless now. Yeah, okay, 80 kilometers isn't bad, but you paid for 120 at the time. You want to do the responsible thing. You want to keep the car on the road by either recycling or re-energizing that battery so that it works better, but they don't make it possible. So let me know what you think. That's the future that I see. They need to make, and when I say they, I mean the industry, the industry needs to make it simple for somebody who owns any of these electric cars that are on the market today to be able to buy a battery and have it installed so that they continue using it well past you know the shelf life that we would expect. But then also aftermarket companies hopefully we'll be able to start getting into it. I know it's expensive at this point, but as more battery technology comes onto the market, as more people start doing it and manufacturing the batteries, creates more competition, meaning that prices should come down. So the more we can do in that, if there is some sort of aftermarket market available for electric conversions and electric battery packs, that could make a huge difference in this market. I think a lot of people would feel more comfortable knowing if they buy a car, whether it's new or used now, that there is some sort of market for it down the road that they can get it back up to full battery strength. And then, like I said, you know, we've got the conversion. That's my idea, taking a regular car as well. You know, there's so many amazing cars. I would do that. I know probably some of you are not going to be too happy about it, but my E38, if I could just take out the engine, take out the drive unit and everything and put an electric battery pack, an electric motor, or maybe two, whatever, and make that a fully electric car, I would do it. I don't have the money, that would cost a lot, but it's something that I would do because I can see that being a really cool feature to have an electric BMW 7 Series. So who knows? But let me know, I mean, I wanted to do this, like I said, it was timing, good timing with the car, good timing with the article, seems to be getting some good traction. It was the front page article today on the Gadgets subreddit. So there's a lot of people talking about this, a lot of exposure going out there when it comes to the sustainability of electric cars in terms of keeping them on the road and having these last longer than six or seven years. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think the solution could be. How can we get more people interested in electrics? How can the aftermarket start to play into this? And what would be the, the overall commitment from manufacturers? What do you think they should be committed to do in order to have you know, some sort of guidelines or regulations on how long they should keep parts available for these cars, keep battery packs available, or even offer new battery packs? Let me know. If you come to this video for the first time, welcome. I encourage you to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Usually we do new car reviews here on Test Drive, but today we just wanted to have a sit and chat about things as we get into the winter months here in Quebec. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.